Cheers to more frickin' gains. <laughs> First off, a claim like this, what good is it if there isn't any evidence behind it? If you're new to the channel here, I had a number of injuries, limitations. I'll link some videos in the description where I explain this at detail that led to my training being a little bit restricted, unusual, unorthodox, where I couldn't really train anything properly at first. Eventually, I found ways to be able to hit my arms because it's mostly just the elbow joint that you have to move. And then within the past like three years, I've also found one leg exercise I can do that doesn't snap me up and that's lunges. And over the past four years total, three, four years, that's all I've been doing. One triceps exercise, one leg exercise, and standing curls. But, you know, occasionally I'll use a rope versus uh, cables versus dumbbells. That's technically a different exercise. Technically different. I mean, really, it's basically the same movement. You're standing, bending your elbows. You know, I would consider like a preacher curl to be different or if you're doing, you know, some kind of machine or whatever. But you get the point. Generally speaking, one exercise per muscle for my arms and legs, those are the only body parts that I train. And I've managed to carve out significant, substantial amounts of muscle growth. Nothing crazy, all right? I don't think I'm all that, but you can see in my physique here that I've, you know, added additional muscle, layered on some extra meatiness and thickness. And um, I'm gonna walk you through what you need, what you should do, given that you can actually train properly, which is most people. And this unique kind of experiment that I've been forced into has led to some conclusions that I think you should take from my training and apply to your own. <clears throat> so I'm not saying that you should just do arms and legs. I'm not saying you should just do exactly what I'm doing. But what you should take from this is that this unique situation forced me to focus on the things that actually produce muscle growth, not exercise selection, just doing all these different movements. That being, how intense do you train the muscle? How often do you train the muscle? How much work do you do? How many sets? What tempo do you do when you perform your sets? How many reps do you do? What type of weight do you use? All of these structural parameters are things that I still had freedom to control. And initially I was happy to just train and just pump my arms, but eventually I started to progress more and go, okay, let's do this. Let's And I just kept showing up day after day, do my mobility work, stretch everything out, bang out some arm sets, Slowly but surely, okay, I can train harder, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can control these variables that actually lead to growth. And so for you, the point, the lesson would be to not get pulled into all this information and content about you gotta isolate your back with like nine different angles and nine different exercises because it distracts you from focusing on the other stuff that actually leads to growth. This cocktail of intensity and frequency and volume and rep range and weight use and progression, I'll get into more detail in a second. I know, I get a little rambly, I'm sorry. Those things are what actually produce results. And what I'm trying to illustrate is that in my wacky, constrained example, I was forced to not be able to focus at all on exercise selection. And the only things I could control were these parameters. And initially, I didn't think this. I was like, great, I can get even more jacked. But what it forced me to do is to get really good with these other parameters because I can't do different movements and I'm really limited in what I can do. So all I can control are these things. And in the end, it produced more muscle growth and more results. And now looking back, I'm like, aha, this is a very interesting finding that I want to share with you guys who can mostly, for the most part, train properly because I used to be able to. And for the first five years or six years of working out, I trained my whole body like a normal person and I got caught up in all this exercise selection and to grow your delts, you gotta get the front and then the lateral and the rear. Caveat, it's not bad to educate yourself about anatomy and understand how different movements target different parts of the muscles. That is useful information. What is problematic or less effective is to get caught up thinking that a good workout for your shoulders or for your triceps, let's say, is to hit all three heads evenly. It's just bullshit, man. And I'm gonna share what my, I got this training video here I found on my YouTube channel from way back when I could train properly. And specifically, we'll hone in on the triceps. I gotta simmer down a little bit. I get a little bit excited. Yip yammering about muscles and shit, yelling at the camp. <laughs> but you can see in this footage of my arm training, this is when I could do any tricep exercise I wanted. I was not restrained. And in theory, now I could, or at this time, I could accurately 
or properly hit all heads of my triceps so I can actually grow them because that's the key to horseshoe tries is to hit the lateral with this shit and the long with that shit and the medial with this fucking cross cable twist it's caught spider caught in the web resistance bad just extend out and hold in your shit while you do it and it's gonna simulate the neurocardiacal osmosis neuromuscular transmitters and you're gonna get 46% higher hypertrophic outcomes according to this recent meta-analysis <laughs> horse shit man Okay, sorry. The point that I'm trying to make is this footage. I mostly did um, push downs. And even in this workout, I think four out of the three out of the four, four out of the five, quick mass, whatever. Most of the exercises are a push down with your elbow at your side. Now, a days, there's all this talk about how, if you haven't heard, here's what everybody's saying, okay. The, the thing to know about the triceps is the long head actually originates on your scapula. Therefore, the long head, which is the biggest head, uh, you need to get into a stretched position overhead to grow it properly. Otherwise, it's not going to grow. And the, if you just do press downs and things like this, it's not going to uh, properly stimulate the long head. And therefore, you're only going to have developed lateral head and medial heads. And your triceps are going to be all in balance. You're not going to see any muscle growth. No matter how you train, but if you don't do the long head thing right, you're going to get smaller by the second. You're probably going to shrivel away and collapse into your own personal black hole and disappear. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but you get the point, all right? People are making it seem like it's so freaking important to isolate all these different heads. And apparently, doing regular press downs or pressing movements, which I was huge into close grip press too. Two plates, I could rep, I thought, I was like, yeah, I'm a badass. Going to the gym and load up two plates, my triceps are strong, I'd bang out like 10 rep, reps close grip. People be like, whoa, man, I can't even do that regular grip. <laughs> so I'd always be like, yeah, load up two plates, psh, psh, slap them on. Mm. Um, the point I'm trying to fucking make, I'm sorry. <laughs> You clicked on this video, you thought you were gonna learn some shit. Instead, you're just listening to a freaking whiskey buzzed madman rambling on about muscles. Woo! Okay, let's get the point across into your system. I'm gonna slap it into you. Um, the point that I'm trying to make without getting freaking derailed off on some outrageous tangent is that at this time, this footage, I was training mostly pressing movements for my triceps and push down movements with my elbows at my sides. And nowadays, everybody's saying that that's not gonna stimulate the long head and you need to do, you know, eight sets for your lateral and then eight sets for your long head by all these stretched variations and shit. Well, look at my freaking tricep development. Does my long head look underdeveloped compared to the lateral and the medial? I don't think so. It looks, it looks good. To me, I mean, a lot of it's your genetics and your shape. Like, everybody's insertions are different and shit. But I wouldn't look at that arm and be like, wow, wow, there's no long head because you're not doing this thing that the science says. And you got to isolate that long head with all these movements. <laughs> the triceps are just, they're growing, man. They're popping out a little bit. I'm doing my cable pushdowns. Three different variations of cable pushdowns, which apparently isn't going to hit your long head at all. <laughs> According to the science freaking dorks. I'm not, it's not all shade. There's science is good. Science is good. It helps us to learn uh, just the context with which it is disseminated in is, is mis misleading. So it's this tiny little detail that if you want to exploit the differences of the anatomy of a certain muscle, say it, let it be the triceps, you can make this point that yes, the long head is here and to get into a stretch position bear. But in practice, how much does that actually matter? And what I'm trying to illustrate to you is very fucking little. So it's this little detail that's true and it makes great content that's gonna get you to buy shit. And I know this because I've made videos like this where people go crazy for any anatomy visual type thing. We're like, oh, I'm learning about the different heads of the chat. That's, oh, let me buy the program. And I'm, I'm like, no, motherfuckers, it's not the stuff that's gonna lead to growth. Like, it's not bad to have that understanding, but I way rather you ha understand this other shit, which now I'll finally get into, which is more important. And so, the benefits of just focusing on one exercise at a time, purely for muscle growth, okay? If you're training for performance or, um, uh, you know, any kind of other type of goal, functionality, whatever, I'm not going to argue that sticking with one movement for your triceps or, or one pressing movement at a time is the way to go. I think you would structure your program differently. But specifically 
for the for the value of muscle gain hypertrophy I think there's a lot of benefit from at least honing in on one movement per muscle group for an extended period of time and then maybe you switch to something else or occasionally you can switch it up if you get bored but the upside is that it forces you to focus on the shit that actually leads to growth which is progressing the weight over time and increasing your volume a little bit and your frequency while paying attention to how your body responds and cutting out all the bullshit of all this exercise selection, isolate all your freaking muscles shit that doesn't, it, unless you're trying to be a professional bodybuilder, get on the stage, you're on all this gear, then yeah, but th this channel is probably not for you if you're that. That's very few people. Most of us, whether you're natural or not natural, you're just training to get a bit more jacked and you just want to bulk out your frame a little bit, right? Okay, for, for that demographic, which is you guys, then th this need to isolate with all these exercises isn't as effective, I don't think, because it distracts you and makes you think that I'm getting a good workout in because I'm doing all this different shit. When you'd be better off to just do one exercise and make sure you do the right shit with am I actually tracking and progressing this one movement over time. And if I stick with this one movement for an extended period of time, it's going to be freaking damn clear if I've seen progress or not. And it's going to force me to focus on whether I'm seeing progress or not and then find a way to progress it. And progressing the weight that you can do or the volume or how often you train within any movement is going to lead to way more muscle growth than switching to a different exercise at any given point in time. In my humble opinion. Okay? And so, once you make this perspective shift that the exercises aren't what's going to fucking lead to growth, and all this content that's telling me that is actually holding me back from making the growth. And this wacko dude that has this freaking crazy injury that most people don't understand, but for whatever reason, he's only training his arms, and for triceps, he's only doing this one movement. For legs, he's only doing lunges, and he's making fucking gains. Okay, so based on that, I'm not going to be as wacky as him. This is what you should say to yourself. But to me, that's a pretty clear example or proof that it's overkill with all this exercise selection shit. And maybe there's something to simplifying my workouts, if specifically I just want to gain muscle, and forcing myself to focus on progressive overload, on to focus on this process of figuring out how much frequency and volume my body needs and then scaling up the amount of sets and how often I train to be bumped up against that upper limit so that I can I stimulate as much growth as I can but it's not too much that my body can't recover from so I'm optimizing the stimulus or the stress that I put on my muscle which has nothing to do with which freaking exercise you do your muscles don't really know whether you're doing freaking flat barbell press or incline dumbbell press, okay? The tension is tension on the muscle. The muscle doesn't have a fucking brain, all right? So your brain, looking at those parameters and focusing on that process and developing your process and being willing to push and progress it is what you need to put all your energy into. And anything that distracts you from that limits your ability to improve and isolate the thing that you're missing. So if you're not consistent and you don't, if you don't hit all your sessions, then watching more content on all these different exercises of how to isolate your delts, all that shit, not worth your time. Find a way to rewire yourself so you go to all your sessions. If you don't push all your sets really hard, at least close to failure, I like to go to failure all the time, but do it as you may, but it needs to, you need to bring some freaking gusto and juice into the workouts. If you don't do that, then don't worry about a video about how to isolate your glutes versus it doesn't matter. And then from there, how can I progress my training so that either I'm upping the weight or I'm upping the volume or I'm adding frequency, okay? And this other little side note which I've talked about before, if you're familiar with the channel, is that a variety stimulus is good here too, where you don't always use the exact same rep range. You don't always do the exact same rest time in between sets. You change those things up a little bit, at least for part of your workout, so that you don't just do the exact same workout over and over again, all right? Extended rest times, I think, are good for progressive overload. Various tempos, a fast tempo will help you to progress the weight. A slow tempo, I think, can help for mind-muscle connection or accentuating the stretch, blah, blah, blah. Um, start with, like, a regular amount of sets. Let's say, like, five to seven sets per working muscle, per workout. Train at least once a week. And then as soon as you can, bump that up to twice. And then up the volume a little bit and see if your body can recover from it. Up it a little more, see if it can recover. Once you hit the point where you don't feel like you're making progress or you're exhausted all the time or you're not gaining any strength for like a month or two straight, then maybe back that volume off a little bit. You've found the sweet spot of what's going to be the optimal amount of frequency and volume for you. Have a structure where you're consistent with those same movements. Stick with them for several months at a time. 
and then have, you know, at the end of your session, do some variety shit, change up the rest times, change up the tempos, change up the rep range, just experiment with some different shit, sprinkle that in there, okay? <laughs> Lastly, this is a big ramble fest, ramble sesh, but I think this shit will really help you guys, because I'm not saying to do some wacky exact shit that I'm doing, I'm just saying take the lessons from my experience to be more effective in the gym. Same thing that's happened with me with, for legs. For a long time, I was not able to do anything with legs. And again, if you're like, this doesn't make any sense, links in the description to the videos that explain my injury and whatever. You can check those out. But just take it as given that I snapped up, all right? And um, eventually I found jumping lunges. I don't know why. I don't fully get it. A split stance movement doesn't require as much mobility through your hips and it doesn't accentuate certain muscle imbalances. If your hip shifts to the right and you go to do a squat, that's gonna like really clearly show up and then you're gonna exacerbate the imbalances if you do that with heavy weight and resistance, enough so to build muscle. So I wasn't able to do any of those movements without snapping my shit up further. Standing in a split stance position where one foot's in front of the other for some reason seems to allow me to, to do the movements as long as I stretch out before and do my mobility and stretch after without worsening the problem. Two. Was it two or three years ago? Two years ago, I started, I found bodyweight jumping lunge. I was like, holy shit, I do a couple sets of that. I'm not snapped up the next day. And I just kept showing up and doing the workout and slowly progressing the weight that I could do. Initially, it was body weight. Now, I'm holding on to 75 pound dumbbells, 150 freaking pounds, jumping up in the air from just keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up. Try to progress the weight, add a few more sets. I do six sets. I use an extended rest time for my legs, and I'm, I would say my legs are still kind of in this newbie gain phase where like, I don't have to do anything that crazy. I just stick to the fundamentals of pushing a failure, always hitting my sessions, control the tempo, but like a little bit of explosive burst, which jumping lunges is conducive to, but I recommend that for triceps, biceps, any muscle group that you use. I think it can help you progress the weight at a much faster rate than doing it with normal tempo based on my own personal experience. And use that extended rest time and then track what I'm doing and try to add an additional rep each time. And my freaking legs and my ass are juicing up, dude. One exercise. Go, oh, you're not hitting your hams. You're not isolating the different sides of the quadricep and the glute and the... Uh, uh. This is what I'm telling you, dude. Sure, if, if you can do all the things that actually matter and do different movements, that's great. That's perfect. But I hope what you can take from this is that if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're not seeing the progress that you want, or you feel like it's just being so overcomplicated and you gotta learn all this shit. And, this, and some people say, this is optimal training, that exercise sucks, this exercise, it doesn't matter, man. If, if I could snap my fingers and heal myself and, and not have any injuries, my training would be still very simplistic in, in terms of um, exercise selection. For pressing movements, I would just pick like one, maybe two movements and stick with those for like six months and just focus on progressing them. Same thing with back. Like, everybody's like, you got a vertical pull for your width, the doors up. Like, okay, in theory, yes. And like, to some degree, I'm sure. But the most, like, you just do a single back extension. Like, my back has grown a lot from just doing freaking tricep extensions because it, it activates the lat some. So if I can grow my back from doing a freaking overhead triceps movement, do you think it really matters that much? If you do this exact isolated single arm cable, fully mounting a seated row like this and stretching like that and then twisting and throwing your head to the opposite side to get some pendulum tilt activation and control. There we go, finally! Finally, I'm going! I wasn't going before, but now that I'm doing it this way. <laughs> Come on, it doesn't matter. So the last thing that I'll leave you with, because if you made it this far, I'm sorry that you have to tolerate all these shenanigans, just in a bit of a wacky mood today, um, is that there's nothing wrong with information, talking about different exercises and how to isolate and all this shit, but the, what the problem is, is that what I end up seeing in the gym over years of training people and working in gyms and being a freaking member in gyms, watching everybody train, is that everybody ends up getting too focused on this scientific, safe, Isolate this muscle that this is the right technique. That's the you got to understand this and the all and it's like dude That's just such a small piece of the pie that really doesn't make a difference And I think the fact that there's so much content being created now. It's created an exacerbated Situation where everybody's the majority of people's view of like what you what you should do to build muscle is skewed towards being so focused on like this optimal and like angles and which exercise when it's like that's such a small piece of it like what happened 
Like, why did we make that the number one thing? Because it makes great content that pulls everyone in so you can sell programs off of it. So, that's what I'm seeing, man. <laughs> So just, just take it all with a grain of salt and be like, okay, cool. Maybe I'll try this new back exercise. But it's not going to make a f***ing difference. If you don't go to all your workouts, if you don't train your ass off, if you don't find some way to progress the weight and the volume that you do over time, the work output, the amount of work you do in a given session or a given week, and if you're not willing to experiment and ex try different things and keep your training moving and evolving, it's not going to f***ing matter which exercise you do. Woo! And if I'm boxed into my little snapped up world where I can only do these bat, 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 and I do bat, 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 and I do my lunges and I'm continuing to see progress, staying completely natural, then what I want you to take from that is that, okay, I need to check my process and be like, am I actually doing these simple freaking things that Matt keeps rambling on about? And anybody else, Eric Bugenhagen, check him out. Same freaking message, okay? Anybody who's like all out, all in lifter, not that ah, I don't want to toss shade. I just think if it's if people who are sharing their experience, people who are super into the gym, committed lifters who have developed the result and are sharing their experience of what they've seen is going to say a similar thing to me. I just think Eric Bugenhagen is a great example. I watched a video of his the other day. I was like, hey, man, brother, hey. Man, dude, I agree with everything you're saying. <laughs> Obviously, I'm biased with what I'm suggesting because I agree with him. You can watch other content creators that aren't saying the same thing, but I just, I, I just, to me, it's so powerfully true that that information about all this optimal and exercise selection and shit is just, it's not what's going to actually help you to produce the freaking result that you want. And I keep saying I'm in the last, this is for sure the last thing that I will leave you with, is that you got to ask yourself, is it more important to be right about how to do something or to get results in the thing that you want? In this case, muscle gain. Do you care more about knowing fucking everything, about how to do it? That, this camp over here. Or do you go, I don't really give a shit if I technically know how to do everything. I just want to be jacked. All right, and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. Why? The reason is because what you think about in your mind produces the results of your actions of what you do. Not to get all freaking meditational guru on you all of a sudden. But generally speaking, we can all agree with the, like, it starts in your head of what you think about and your pro what you focus on produces your habits, which then in the case of the gym and fitness produces the physical results that you get. And if you stay fucking focused on getting so caught up on knowing how to do something, which so many people are, that don't have good results, you miss the, the practical experience part of it, which is so valuable. It's like, in theory, this is the, the, the but it, oh, that's great in theory. But what happened when you went and applied it over and over and over again? I want to talk to the person that did the thing. And what do they have to say, regardless of what analytical, theoretical thing is you're telling me? I want the person who has the result. What did you do? Because it's not just about knowing, it's about applying. Unless you just want to stroke your ego and feel more comfortable and put other people down and justify your lack of progress by acting like you know how to do everything, which is what motherfuckers are doing. Have a great day. Go make some games. Peace. <laughs>